I want to talk about some Broncos draft rumors with you today because I came into work this morning. I started looking at some NFL mock drafts because a whole bunch came out after the Super Bowl, and I noticed a pattern, and we're going to look at those two patterns on today's show. So let's jump into the first pattern I saw, which was, are the Broncos going to trade up for a quarterback? So two very notable NFL mock drafters came out with mock drafts lately, and both of them have Denver making a splash trade to get into the top five. First, from NFL.com, we have Chad Reuter, who has Denver jumping up to number four with the Arizona Cardinals to get Drake May. Can we take a moment, though, to realize the Bears come away with Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. in this mock draft from Chad? That could not go any better for Chicago. But then we also have a PFF mock draft, which has Denver jumping up all the way to two, swapping with the Commanders to also get Drake May. So we're seeing a few trends and patterns here, right? Denver trading up, but also Denver not just trading up for any quarterback, Drake May, which we'll look at closer in a little bit. But let me get your opinion on just the overall idea of trading up first, because it's not going to be cheap. So are you in the camp of, hey, if they're going to be a superstar quarterback, it's worth it. Give up future assets or in the camp of, no, even if they are a great quarterback, we won't be any good without having three, four, five years of no first round pick minus that quarterback for everything we gave up for Russell Wilson and then this quarterback. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. I first want to start this conversation off by saying it takes two to trade and people tend to forget that when they fire up the pro football focus mock draft simulator and they propose these trades and go, look, it's so easy to trade. Well, you need someone at the top of the draft to want to come down. And when you look at the top three teams like Bears, Commanders, Patriots, they all need a quarterback, right? And so we take a closer look at Chad Reuter's mock draft for a moment. This is a mock draft that has a special circumstance, which is Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams, they do not go one, two, three in the top three, right? We see Marvin Harrison Jr. take someone's spot at number three, thus allowing Drake May to slip out. And I could see the Arizona Cardinals trading out of number four if one of those three quarterbacks is available and a team calls and gives them an offer they cannot refuse. And if Marvin Harrison Jr. does go top three because I think he's going to be a better all-around football player than Jaden Daniels, for example. Watch out, because the Arizona cell towers, they are all going to be shut down from the phone calls they are getting for teams trying to trade up and get whichever quarterback slipped out of the top three. I personally don't think it's very likely that we see Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or Caleb Williams fall out of the top three, but... It does happen. It's the NFL draft. Expect the unexpected. So let's say that what Chad Reuter proposed does happen, which is a quarterback slips out of the top three. Denver picks up the phone. They call the Cardinals. Marvin Harrison's not even on the board anymore. So Arizona's got some good incentive to trade back. And this is the offer that Chad Reuter came up with. Denver gets the fourth overall pick from Arizona, a first round pick swap. And in exchange for falling back from 12 to four, Arizona picks up a third round pick this year, and a future first. So Denver comes away with Drake May being the only pick in the first two days of the draft because they don't have a second, and that's their only third round pick. And they give up a future first rounder, which I think this is pretty fair and ballpark expectations for jumping from 12 to 4. We saw the San Francisco 49ers go from 12 to 3, and they gave up much more than this. So this might be even on the light side for going up. But again, it's not going to be cheap. Now let's talk about Pro Football Focus's mock draft a little bit closer for a second. Because this is appearing to be a pre-draft trade where Denver calls Washington. And for some reason, the commanders aren't interested in a quarterback. So the Broncos fly up to two to get Drake May. My initial reaction to this was, why would Washington trade down? I read PFF's article, and they never really gave a clear reason as to why they believed Washington might be looking to trade down. They've got new ownership there. They've got the second overall pick and a QB-loaded draft class. There's no way they're not taking a quarterback. Maybe a team that's got a head coach and a GM that's been there for a long time 
Maybe they play it safe and they trade back and get future assets, but not the 2024 Washington Commanders. But the thing I keep circling back on is you need to find two teams to trade. And when you think about the teams in the top three right now, they know this is a great quarterback class, but what they also know is next year's quarterback class is not very good. So if you don't take a quarterback this year, you may not find anyone nearly as good next year. And all of a sudden, your head coach and GM, they could be fired for waiting too long to take a quarterback. You don't believe me? Jeremy Fowler just came back from the Super Bowl, and he wrote about what he's been hearing. And here's what he said about the 2025 quarterback class. The 2025 quarterback crop at this stage looks poor in terms of depth. Georgia's Carson Beck, Texas's Quinn Ewers, and Colorado's Shadur Sanders are the early headliners. And then there's a drop-off in proven contenders. A veteran NFL scout had this to say on next year's quarterback class. It won't be anything close to this year. So once again, it takes two to trade, and I have a hard time believing you're going to get the Bears, the Commanders, or the Patriots to agree to trade back when they all need quarterbacks, and next year's quarterback class isn't nearly as sexy as this year's quarterback class. So the only way I can actually see Denver trading up to the top five is the Chad Ruder mock draft, where a quarterback were to slip out of the top three, which I don't think is going to happen, but it's the NFL draft, expect the unexpected. And then Denver makes a blockbuster move to get up and get the quarterback of the future. Kind of like what the Bears did with Justin Fields, right? They signed Andy Dalton to be their starter because they didn't expect at pick number 20 to come anywhere close to a quarterback. But lo and behold, Justin Fields starts to slip a little bit, and then they were able to move up and get up. So now let's look and see what it costs to go up to number two in this pro football focus mock draft. We've got a first-round pick swap, and then you got next year's first, and second, going to Washington, and then the following year's first-round pick. So two future firsts and a second to swap picks this year. That's steep, but that's what it's going to cost to go from 12 to 2. I've got no reservations that if you want to go from 12 to 2, you are swapping first, and you are giving up two future first-round picks, which means Denver will have had one first-round pick in the drafts of 2021, 2022, 2022, Oh, no, 2022, we start over. 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026. Five years and only one first-round pick to show for. That's a tough way to construct a roster. Denver's hope, ultimately, a quarterback falls out of the top three. That is really their best chance of getting one of these top three quarterbacks. Now, we can talk about, which we will in a moment, getting that next tier of quarterback at 12 or maybe in day two of the draft. But if you are really banking on getting a Drake May, getting a Jaden Daniels, it's not about coming up with a good trade offer for the other teams. You need to have one of those teams want to trade down. So really it comes down to one of those teams deciding, we like a wide receiver a lot and we're going to surprise everyone on draft night and not go quarterback. That's my personal you know, take on the whole thing. I will add that after the NFL Combine, we're going to get a lot more clarity and a much more clear picture on what to expect out of the NFL draft. Because every single year at the Combine, all the head coaches and GMs get together and they start talking about, once they're also watching the Combine, where they expect certain guys to go. And if after the Combine, it's very clear the top three quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, teams will start adjusting their draft strategy knowing, okay, we can rule out the idea of trading to the top three or... They come out of the combine, and the Patriots kind of leak out, you know what, we don't really like Jaden Daniels. We're open to trading that third overall pick. All that really starts to stumble out following the combine. Now, before we get to the second takeaway from the recent mock drafts I've been seeing, I do want to share with you guys some information about our lovely sponsor today, which is Game Time. Happy Valentine's Day. Probably should have let off with that one. But if you are a little bit like me, and I hope my girlfriend's not watching right now, and you are what they call day late dollar short, and you tend to push off things, well, it's not too late to get someone a lovely Valentine's Day gift by going to game time and getting them tickets to whatever they want to see. Whether you're dating someone who loves sports, right? Whether it's the Yavs or the Nuggets, or if you want to go see a concert potentially. 
download the game time app and enter this promo code Broncos chat and you're going to get $20 off. So if you want to save some money and treat your loved one to a concert in your local area, a sporting event in your local area, talking to all the ladies right now, if your boyfriend's got a favorite team in the NBA or the NHL and you want to surprise him with a great Valentine's Day gift, nothing is better than a last minute trip to a game. So download the game time app and make sure to use that promo code Broncos chat for $20 off. Now, I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. So, shout out to Game Time for supporting the Broncos breakdown. Once again, that's Game Time. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, we've spent all this time just talking about what it would cost to move up and whatnot and how feasible it is. But we haven't discussed, is it worth trading up, right? Is it worth trading up to get Drake May, who these two mock drafts have Denver selecting? You can look at his stats through his two years as a starter at Chapel Hill, and they definitely pop off the screen. And I'll just say right now, I've got full belief Drake May is the real deal. I think Drake May is a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. I don't know if he's going to be the next Patrick Mahomes by any stretch, but I think he's going to be a franchise quarterback for a team and a guy that you don't have to worry about every single season. So I've got my full vote of confidence going to Drake May being a successful quarterback, which again means if Denver has the opportunity to trade up and get him, I'm definitely game. I I'm not going to freak out too much about the compensation, but that's definitely a factor. It's a big jump from 12 to 2 to 3 to 4. I know that if they do make that trade, it's not going to be a trade that goes down as one of the worst trades ever because they're at least going to get a good player out of it. But can you find someone willing to trade back? Now let's move on to the second pattern I noticed in these mock drafts. J.J. McCarthy to the Broncos at pick number 12. A lot of mock drafts that did not have Denver trading up all had a consensus pick for Sean Payton at number 12, which is the Michigan quarterback. The Athletic came out with a new mock draft after the Super Bowl, and they've got J.J. McCarthy to Denver at number 12. ESPN's Field Yates came out with a new mock draft. He's got J.J. McCarthy to Denver at number 12. Bleacher Report came out with a new mock draft. You notice how all the other names and faces are changing? Except for the one in the middle, J.J. McCarthy to the Denver Broncos at pick number 12. So now we're starting to see a little bit of smoke, to say the least, right? I don't know if this means we have a new pope in the Vatican or if it's just some people connecting dots from what they heard during the Super Bowl. But let's talk about J.J. McCarthy for a moment. He's six foot three, 202 pounds, so really good size for a quarterback. My pros for him, flashes of precision accuracy. He had that one incredible throw, especially against Ohio State, where he layered the ball beautifully in between the linebacker and the DB for a big play for the Wolverines. He's also very smart with the football, only nine interceptions in two years as a starter. Now, my con for J.J. McCarthy, it's a very small body of work. Right, And I'm not going to penalize J.J. too much for this, and that is he was in a run-first offense that ran the ball really well. So, of course, Michigan's not going to just start throwing the piss out of the ball because they want to improve J.J. McCarthy's draft stock. But there is something to be said of, we didn't see J.J. really air it out all that much in 2023 to have a concrete, confident idea as to whether or not he can make accurate downfield throws. In two years as a starter for the Wolverines, again, very smart with the football, a winning quarterback, only lost one game as two years as a starter. But one number that jumps out to me is the passing yard. And again, this is where we sort of circle back to J.J. McCarthy has been described as an elite processor. I know GMs rave about that. They're looking for that. But I don't know if he is the pick at number 12. I don't want to see Denver make a panic pick at 12, and take a quarterback just for the sake of taking a quarterback, right? If they take J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, anyone else at 12 just because they want to get a quarterback, not because they think he's one of the top 12, 13, 14 players in this draft class, and it doesn't work out, well, fast forward to next year or the following year, you're right back to where you started, you're picking a quarterback, and you're also down what could have been a very quality starter like a corner or an edge rusher or any other position you could have gotten at 12, but because you wanted a quarterback, 
You took one just for the sake of taking a quarterback. And now we've got James Yoder from Michigan Football Report. Yeah. I so I I so James Yoder, who hosts our Michigan Football Report and is my boss, just popped into the studio. Says from what he heard in Las Vegas, because he was out there for the Super Bowl, that JJ to Denver at twelve is in play. And I do think Sean Payton would definitely love to have a quarterback like J.J. McCarthy, an elite processor, a guy who can run an offense very well. So this is a growing trend. It's a growing rumor, no doubt about it. Here's my concern. It's not – it's the lack of production as a passer in college. So I went back from 2010 to present, and what I found were there were six quarterbacks taken in the first round that in college never threw for more than 3,000 yards in a season. And it's not like if you throw for 3,000 yards, you're going to be a great quarterback. There are plenty of quarterbacks who threw for 4,000 yards and sucked in the NFL. But that lack of film, that lack of production, can lead to teams having to guess right whether or not they can make the jump to the NFL. It's too early to grade anything about Anthony Richardson. Trey Lance, man. That's a pick where I think the 49ers look back and go, we probably should not have put all of our eggs in the basket of this guy didn't play a lot of football. Daniel Jones didn't really work out in New York, I'd say. Cam Newton, definitely an exception, but he was also a great runner for Auburn, and that was a big factor as to why they were picking up so many yards on the ground and not having to pass as much. Jake Locker to the Titans, stunk. The Pond Monster going to the Vikings, stunk. So that's not great company to be in. Denver cannot miss with this pick. They have not had a first-round pick for two years now. They have to nail this pick. If you don't nail this pick, meaning you take a quarterback just for the sake of taking a quarterback and it's a bust, it feels like it's going to be three years without a first-round pick because unlike other positions, if you take a corner or an edge and they're not that great, they're still going to get on the field a little bit, right? If you take a quarterback and they suck, they're just on the bench. It may as well have been like you never picked them at all. So this is a very important draft for Denver. They are finally back in the first round. They have got to make this pick count, and I don't want to see them just take the best quarterback on their draft board at 12 because they need a quarterback. If they don't think that guy's got first-round talent, don't panic pick. All right, who do you want to pick at number 12, though? To wrap up the video today, I do want to get your opinion on this 12th overall selection. So let me know in the comment, sec and let me know in the comment section who you want to see Sean Payton select at number 12 overall. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. I really appreciate everyone for watching all the way to the end. And if you're still watching right now, part of the end of the video squad, type D-E-N in the comments.